This crafting video is brought to you by Suze Weinberg Design Studio, Inc. and ABC Advertising. Welcome to Backgrounds into the Forefront with Suze Weinberg. Suze is a well-known designer and rubber stamp artist who has brought many dynamic and exciting products and techniques to the rubber stamp and crafting industry. Products such as ultra-thick embossing enamel, Ultra Effects, Wonder Tape, Puff Static Away Pads, Wonder Beads, Snap-In Brayers, Suze's Scoops, and many more. The goal of this video is to introduce you to a new realm of creative backgrounds for rubber stamping. Hi Stampers, I'm back on a new video to show you some great techniques for making incredibly fast and easy backgrounds using ordinary stuff that's just lying around the house. Everywhere I go, Stampers ask me how I created the interesting backgrounds on my cards and other projects. Well, now you're going to learn the secrets by watching this step-by-step -step video. Just what sorts of ordinary household items am I talking about? Take salt, for instance. It's great on fries, but did you ever think it could create a background this beautiful? Here's how it was done. Brayer rainbow dye ink onto a glossy card. Spray the card with water from a fine mist spray bottle. Shake on table salt. Don't be nervous. Use an assortment of different types of salt like kosher, rock, or sea salt. Allow the salt to absorb the water. Be patient and wait till the card is fully dry. Brush the salt off, and you now have a patterned background paper for stamping. But here's the best yet. The salt absorbs the color of the wet ink. So save the brushed off colored salt. It can always be used in a shaker card. I used rock salt for this shaker card. This background looks like frost on a window pane. It was created using ordinary plastic wrap, and here's how it was done. Use a rainbow dye ink pad and brayer onto a glossy card. Use a fine mist spray bottle to spray the card with water. Then, place the kitchen plastic wrap over the wet card. Make sure to be patient and allow that card to dry thoroughly before removing the plastic wrap. If you own metallic markers, you can do the same technique with them. Apply the markers to a glossy card. Spray mist, then lay down plastic wrap. Allow it to dry, then pull the plastic wrap off to reveal your background. Waxed paper can also be used to create some exciting backgrounds. These finishes are created with the following materials. Waxed paper, a household iron, a light colored card, a sheet of inexpensive bond paper, a pointed tool, dye ink pads, and a brayer. Start by setting your iron to the hottest setting. No steam is necessary. Then, crumple a medium-sized piece of waxed paper in your hands. Open up the crumpled paper and lay onto the card. Lay a piece of bond paper over the waxed paper for protection and press the iron on this sheet for two to three seconds. This will allow the waxed paper to transfer to both the card and the protective paper. However, if you leave the iron on too long, the waxed paper will melt into your card and disappear. Now, simply ink your brayer 
and roll it over the card. The ink will resist transferring to the wax design and the design will show up as white. Don't forget, you can brayer the waxed paper and the cover paper too. An alternative method of transferring the wax to the paper is to use any pointed tool. You can even use a kitchen fork. Simply lay the waxed paper on the card and scribble your own hand-drawn design into the waxy surface. You can try hearts, circles, lines, or any type of freehand pattern. Again, ink your brayer and roll it over the card to reveal your design. I have absolutely no idea what these things are used for, but household bleach can be used for more than just household chores. I use it to create these really dramatic backgrounds. For this project, you need black or dark colored cards, paper or plastic plates, stamps, a brayer, and a dye ink rainbow pad. Fold a paper towel a few times for thickness and lay it on a paper or plastic plate. Pour some bleach into the paper towel, enough to make it wet but not overly saturated. Moisten your rubber stamp by gently tapping it into the wet paper towel. Press your stamp onto the black card. Wait a few minutes and watch as the bleach removes the color from the card. You can leave your card as is for a striking background, or you can use a brayer to apply rainbow dye ink to the surface. You can also use bleach as a calligraphy ink, as I did on this matching note card and envelope. I'm really into that bleaching effect. Now, if you're like me, you never know what to say when the grocery clerk asks you, paper or plastic? From now on, your answer should be paper, so you can recycle them with this eye-catching technique. Personally, my favorite paper bag is this one, which I would never cut up. But actually, you can use any high-fiber paper, like banana, mulberry, or even textured wallpaper. What you'll need is a Lucite brayer, not a rubber one. We love our Snap-in brayer, which fits the handle of the Hunt 4117 brayer. You'll need pigment ink and an archival or heat set ink like Fabrico or Crafters, stamps, embossing powder, and a heat gun. Any brand heat gun will work, but my Sure Shot heat gun is very fast and very quiet. That way, you can emboss late at night without disturbing anyone. Start by cutting your bag to your desired size and stamp using your archival or heat set ink and let the ink dry. Then, crumple up the bag until it is really crinkled. Then uncrumple it and lay it out flat. Now you're going to snap in the Lucite roller from our snap-in brayer package. Roll the Lucite brayer into the pigment or heat set ink pad and roll onto the surface of the bag. Roll it back and forth a few times. You can even roll it from side to side and around in circles. By using the Lucite brayer, the ink will only appear on the raised crinkles. A rubber brayer will transfer ink to the unwanted areas. Sprinkle whichever color embossing powder you like, heat the powder with your heat gun, and your paper bag background is ready to mount to a card. I like to say that this next technique accentuates the negative because like the bleach project, your final image will appear as a negative. 
And who would believe that the secret to this project is soot? To create this background, you need to assemble these materials, matches and a candle that produces soot, a white glossy card, a stamp with good detail, and a clear spray fixative. After lighting the candle, hold your card glossy side down to the flame. Don't touch the card to the wax, just the flame. Soot should start appearing immediately. Continue holding the card to the flame until you have covered a large area of the card with a nice, even film. For an added artistic touch, you can deliberately burn the edges of the card. This technique is entirely optional, and extra care should be taken not to start a fire. Then simply press an uninked stamp into the soot on the card and lift. Your negative image will appear. Your final step is to apply spray seal to your project and allow it to dry. Otherwise, the soot will rub right off. Sorry to say, there is not enough soot to re-stamp. If you like the dramatic look of the soot background, you are sure to like this next project, created with a piece of common rubber shelf liner. One of the supplies you'll need for this background is Wonder Tape, and I never go anywhere without Wonder Tape in my basket. It's resistant to heat, which makes it great for embossing, and it's archival in nature unlike other tapes. It will never yellow or lift, and it sticks to anything. Wonder Tape comes in either sheets or rolls. This project requires the Wonder Tape sheet, a rubberized shelf liner, ultra-thick embossing enamel, available now in a convenient boxed set, and a heat gun. Some other supplies you can use are Suze's Scoops, Ultra Effects, Loose Glitter, and Wonder Beads. What I've done is mixed a few scoops of all the colors of Ultra Thick into a small dish. That's as close to cooking as I'll ever get. To begin, you need no ink. The ultra-thick embossing enamel will stick all by itself to the shelf liner. After applying the enamel, heat the surface of the shelf liner with your heat gun. As you heat, you can add embellishments like glitter, wonder beads, or ultra effects. The liner may distort and shrink slightly as it is heated, but really that's okay. Allow it to cool. Look how rich and shimmering the turquoise ultra effects are on this background. Then cut a piece of wonder tape from the sheet to mount your shelf liner background to your card. Trim the edges and remove the backing. The Wonder Tape will bond it permanently to your card. More dimensional elements, such as your stamped art, can be added to the project to give it your own personal touch. This next background is one of my favorites because the texture really stands out. To make this background, you need your heat gun, a card, and regular embossing powder because it's best not to use ultra thick on this project. And the secret for creating this texture is fusible web. You can buy fusible web from your local fabric store. Fusible web is generally used to bond fabrics together without the need for stitching. But here's how we will use it. 
Cut a piece of fusible web a little bigger than your card and place it on the card. Heat the webbing with your heat gun to melt it to your card. And continue heating until the webbing separates and fuses to the card. This will form interesting textures and patterns. Next, sprinkle on some embossing powder. Remember, the finer powders tend to work better. As you heat the powder with your heat gun, the webbing will separate further and become even more affixed to the card. Heat enough to make the webbing stick as permanently as possible. But don't overheat. If there are too many loose spots, the webbing can easily lift off. Attach other stamped images with either foam mounting tape or wonder tape. Now you know how to use fusible web to create a beautiful three-dimensional card with a deeply textured background. On this card, you can see I used a variety of colors of embossing powder on the fusible web. Well, if you like the elegant look of lace, on this next background, we're going to show you how to turn this into this. This technique combines the look of lace with the texture of glitter and glass beads. To create this background, assemble the following materials. A wonder tape sheet, a heavy card or piece of mat board, fine glitter, glass holeless beads, and a plastic zip bag, a puff static away pad, scrap paper, a bone folder, and a piece of your favorite fabric lace. Cut your wonder tape sheet to fit the card. Remove the liner from one side and adhere it to the card. After it is down, remove the other liner. Then cut your lace fabric slightly bigger than your card. Carefully lay the lace on the wonder tape. Use a bone folder to press it down and make it nice and smooth. Then tap the scrap paper under your project with one of our puff static away pads to demagnetize it. Then sprinkle your glitter onto the lace. It will stick to the exposed areas, but not the areas under the lace. To return excess glitter to its jar, Tap all loose glitter from the lace onto the scrap paper and funnel it back into the jar. Then pull the lace away from the tape. It should pull away easily. You can use it over and over again. You can now fill in the remaining exposed area with beads. The easiest way to do this is to fill a plastic zip bag with beads and insert the card. Shake the bag so the beads stick to the tape and complete the design. It's easy and creates a dynamic and elegant design. For more variations, you can substitute another shade of glitter or embossing powder in place of the beads. I know this cheesecloth is used somehow in the kitchen but not being overly domesticated, I really don't have a clue how. However, on this last background, I will show you how to create another colorful design. Begin by assembling the following supplies. A piece of cheesecloth cut to approximately eight inches by eight inches. Heavy mat board, again, cut approximately eight inches square. Heavy duty clear packing tape, a soft rubber brayer, dye ink in assorted colors, and or a dye rainbow pad, a glossy card, scissors, and spray seal fixative. Although the cheesecloth is already a loosely woven cloth, 
Make it even more open by pulling threads out in both directions. Continue until you have a loosely configured design. Next, attach the cloth to the mat board on three sides using the heavy-duty clear packing tape. It is important that the cloth stay down, so you may want to overlap the tape to the opposite side of the mat board. Slip the card through the open end. Then, ink your brayer and roll it over the cheesecloth. The ink will transfer only into the open areas on the card. Remove the card and rotate it and repeat the process. Continue until you have a pattern you like. If desired, you can spray seal this card so it retains its brightness permanently. The same would apply to any projects using dye ink. And if you have any bubble wrap, sprayer that too. and press it onto your card. It makes a great beehive background. Many of the backgrounds we've just demonstrated can be stamped on. To quickly illustrate how some of these elements can be combined, I'll demonstrate a completed card project. One of my favorite tools for crafting and card making is this Xyron machine. For me, it's become the ultimate tool for layering or laminating projects. It makes it easy to create the dimensional look I love. we're almost out of time, I'll leave you with a few tips to make your stamping experience hassle-free. If you tend to get hot embossing powder on your work surface, especially when you use my ultra-thick embossing enamel, place a piece of parchment baking paper or waxy freezer wrap paper underneath your embossing area. Powders will not stick to it after they've cooled off. Use our Puff Static Away Pad on your card surface before embossing. It prepares your surface by demagnetizing it and removing the moisture, so there's no more unwanted little specks of powder that you have to fight to brush off. And it's great for calligraphers, too, because it prevents the ink from bleeding and feathering out. When re-inking a pad, if you should accidentally over-ink it, just tap the pad against another identical pad. This re-inks two pads at one time and takes the excess off. Never throw anything away. When you look back on it weeks later, you will find you were probably too much of a perfectionist. There's always something in the design worth saving. Tear it and collage it. When working with spray sealers or embossing powders, it's always best to work in a well-ventilated area or even wear a face mask. If you've been admiring the pin I'm wearing, it was done using my ultra-thick embossing enamel. And now you can learn the technique from my first video, Ultimate Enamels. Look for my exciting full line of products at a retailer near you or shop us online at www.schmoozewithsues.com.
show you some great techniques for making incredibly fast back fat blah blah blah. <laughs> I knew it was too good to be true. And hide. Oh here. Okay, what do I have to say? Weeks later, you will find you were probably too much of a perfection. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got it now. If you leave the wax pit. <laughs> the wax paper under the iron. The iron will disappear. If you leave the wax paper under the iron too long. <laughs> Take 94. Okay. This is what a crafting table really looks like.